I'm going to an event um, where it's like a solidarity among uh, people of all the communities to stop the violence and the hate against the transgender community and to show support for our trans uh, brothers and sisters. So um, I can't wait to showcase this event right here on Lick Your Gender. Transgender Empowerment Week takes place next week from Sunday until Monday from the 23rd, is it 23rd? Sorry, 23rd to the 29th. And throughout that week we've had several workshops and we're also having the Transgender Job Fair which gives empowerment to trans people to find work, get off the streets, stop sex work. It's an amazing opportunity for people to take their lives in their own hand. One more thing. If you haven't signed those green sheets, I know you're going to hate me about this, but we run out of them. Please make sure that, that you tell a friend. Make sure if you have, if you are in contact with an agency or, per, uh, or you belong to a, uh, a group, make sure you download them, make copies. And people who believe in these um, services and in this cause, have them sign it and please send it back to us. We had a, a program All right, today you and we're celebrating the, the, the lives of people who died who have died up to today. A lot of people have been missing. And we have a lot of people from the community Morgan, that came to support, a lot of people that came to um, do uh, speeches, people, uh, family members of these people who died, they're here. And they have given us all the support and support has, and the support has come from the community as well. And that's what we're doing here, just to make sure the community is, is together again. We are deeply saddened by the loss of your strong, of your strong beautiful, kind woman and a member of our community. Sneaker Stewart, we, ex we extend our deeply sympathy to all of her family members, friends and loved ones. On, Fe on February 9, 2008, Sneaker Stewart, a 25-year-old black transgender woman was found dead in her Bronx apartment. Sneaker was alleged stabbed to death when her practitioner realized she was a transgender woman. The media has the way the media has covered Shaniga's death is not only disrespectful to her, but also reinforce the attitude that the lives of trans women of color are somewhat less valuable than others. The turnout tonight was fantastic. We had so many who came out to remember our sisters that we had lost this year and the years past. But more needs to be done. Each and every year, we just cannot sit back and wait on you know, International Day of Remembrance. We must do this each and every year on the anniversary of that day of death. And to inspire and to educate. We just don't stop with vigils. We have to get out and educate other community members about our lives are valuable. We're not expendable. You don't expose us. You do not hurt us. We're human beings with families. We have friends that love us, that care about us, that's going to nurture us. Uh, and our politicians got to quit talking and start doing something. Our daily news and other media source covered the story with senseless headlines and without any respect for who Shanika really was. They include the use of her male pronoun and her birth name, as well as emphasize in emphasized on her appearance and alleged involvement in sex work that remained a problematic and offensive offensive. The assumption of language in a following follow-up article, slain transgender neighbor, a friend of the whole building. A little better, but yet it is clear example is a clear exa example of how the media continue to exploit and abuse our community. So ago I was actually attacked here in San Francisco um, and so for me this is a big healing um, to come here and to see that I'm not alone and that and to understand that what for whatever reason that I got chose to walk the world in this body that it was a blessing and that I'm here to teach a lot of people a lot of things about ways to be different in the world and so I just want to say and just hold up for for my brothers and sisters out there who are having a hard time that that you're a blessing and that you deserve to be celebrated. And that I'm here to, to celebrate me and I'm here to celebrate all of you as survivors. Because on the daily, we're survivors. I'm a survivor today. And so that's what this poem is about. What this event meant to me is that this event um, has been a blessing. Coming back to San Francisco, 
it's a real healing for me. I'm from Santa Cruz, um, and three months ago, outside of a nightclub here in uh, San Francisco, yeah. myself and four of my closest uh -huh. friends were attacked. Um, had a Patron tequila yeah. bottle broken over the side of my head, suffered a fractured yeah. skull and a dislocated jaw. Um, and Hi, all the pieces that come along with being in a hate crime came with like that. Depression, frustration, Thank anger, you. Um, Thank ruined you. a lot of friendships, you. relationships. Um, and a big healing for me has been my writing. It's been able to uh, put it into poetry and know that I have a healing to offer the world. Um, and, and, and to just let people know that they, they're deserving of being celebrated. That being transgender is a blessing. You get to walk the world as a, as a shade of gray in a black and white society. And uh, it's a beautiful thing. And I'm very blessed. I'm very blessed to be who I am, and to be alive and able to speak. And I'm thankful. She asked if I wanted to see the picture. And I shifted in my seat and nodded yes, but I should have said not yet. See, I wasn't quite ready to see my head disfigured and swollen, captured and exposed. See, I was developed to be remembered as fractured and bruised, filed by case number as a photograph victim. I wanted to cry, to scream my name so loud that I'd be remembered from my voice and not from my wounds. And I have to think, how many moments of me must there be in glossy prints and five by eights? The awkward school photos and the missing teeth shots, slides from my first train rides and parks and picnics with childhood faces long forgotten, names and dates written on the backs of photo paper, all the pictures of smiles and laughs, all the, oh yeah, I remember that, and the, remember that day? That bring the broken hearts back to the table to talk. See, I want to be remembered as a legacy, photographed as a lineage of laughter. I want to be remembered for my stories, not for my wounds. So mama, don't picture me broken and swollen. Picture me captured before puberty, photographed and exposed as innocent. Don't picture me swollen and broken. See me like the memory of three, the missing teeth and spit bubbles, the harmony of goo goos and gagas, slurred syllables and love sounds, broken down by sleepy frowns, my bumpy pillow and goodnight kisses. Mama, don't picture me bruised and swollen. See me captured before the recognition of a hard walk line, the separation of normality and authenticity.